Hey guys, what's up? Zach here, or Z Tutorials, and today I'm going to show you how to make a custom logo. In this case, it is a Facebook logo, but these skills can be used to make any logo that you wish, including your own. So let's hop right in and show you how to make this. So here we are in Photoshop, and before I get started, I just want to let you know that all these texts I have up here, this is the stats, these are the inputs that I put in for, for example, bevel and emboss just so you can follow along much easier and you don't have to pause videos like you would on someone else's videos. I just think it's a, a nice addition so you guys can follow along much easier. Now I'm going to select a 250 by 250 pixel size. If you want to do that yourself, just press Ctrl N and then select 250 by 250 on the height and the width. Now this box I'm making myself is just for my own guides. You won't really need to do this yourselves. I'm going to select the rounded rectangular tool. You will need to do this. So if you want to know where that is, by default the rectangular tool will be selected. Left click and hold and then you will get these other options. You want to select the rounded rectangular tool. Now you also want to make sure that the radius, which is up on top there, where it says uh, 40 pixels, it's up at the very top of the properties panel. You want to make sure that's set at 40 pixels as a radius. And then you will get this nice rectangle. Now, mine is currently at the blue, yours probably will be white. The reason being is my foreground color is blue. Now, if you're a novice to Photoshop, the foreground simply means the color that you are selecting. And the color I've selected there is 2002E5A. And that is the hex code down there at the bottom right. So to select that, just click on your foreground, insert that code, and then you will have your dark blue. Now we want to select, we want to put a bevel and emboss on this as well as a stroke. So to do that, you need to double click and open up your styles panel. Now in the layers panel there, you can see first off, you want to rename every layer that you make. Now the reason being is when you become better at this, when you start doing more projects, it's a good habit to get into so you can find stuff very easily if something goes wrong. So always rename your panel. Now put in those inputs I have there. You have a depth of 100, a size of 10, and a soften of 16 pixels. Enter that in, click OK, and as you can see, that is the effect that we get. It's kind of like the shape is popping out of the page, which is exactly what we wanted. We're going to double click on the layer again, and we're, this time we're going to select the stroke style, and we're going to input the hex code 313s, and then we're going to have the size as 6 pixels wide. Click OK and that is our shape done. We don't need to mess with the shape anymore. Now we're going to move on to the text. Now the text is pretty easy. There really isn't much in it. You just want to make a new layer. Again, rename a text. Get into the good habit now while we're doing it. And then you want to select the T. Look for the large T which stands for the text tool. Now when you do that, just select anywhere on the shape and put in the letter that you want or the words that you want. In this case, since I'm doing the Facebook logo, I just want one F. Now when I put in the F first, you won't be able to see it. The reason being is our foreground color is that blue. Now remember what I said about the foreground. Whatever is in the foreground, that is the color that you have selected. So we're going to switch that around to the white, or you can select the foreground color and change it just to a white. It's up to yourself. Again, this is something that you need to mess around with so you're comfortable in what you're doing. But these are basically just the basics. We're going to change the text font. We're going to change the size. And that's pretty much it. You can mess around with that yourselves. I'm really not going to not going to go into too much detail. But as you can see, there's the text font. I can't even pronounce it. Staccato? Statico? Statico? Strico? I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Jeez, oh, I guess sidetracked very easily. Anyway, double click on that text. And we want to put that bevel and emboss on it. Now, as you can see, it's just generic as it stands right now. Now, you will notice that the bevel and emboss doesn't look right at the start. The reason being is the style is set as inner bevel, and that is from the first time that we do it. It is a default that Photoshop does. We want to select that, and we want to put on an outer bevel. Now, what the outer bevel will do is it will put that bevel, and a bevel is kind of like a shape on the outside of the text, not the inside. And that will make it bounce off the page more, once more. So we have the shape bouncing off the page. And then we have the letter bouncing off the page. And that's pretty much what we've done there. Now if I back into the one I made earlier, you can see that there is a spotlight on the actual shape. So let's create a new layer and do that spotlight. Now we're going to rename it as always. We're going to call it something very simple like spotlight. 
And now we're going to do the spotlight. Now there's really a load of ways you can do this, a ton of ways. One way is using the marquee tool. And you can use an elliptical marquee tool. You can use a, a rectangle marquee tool. And you can do it that way. It's the same step as I'm going to use with the pen tool. The reason I'm using the pen tool is I want to show you it once. And two, it is much more customizable. So you click for your start point, left click. Then left click again for your end point. And when you click, hold it down and then drag. And you'll be able to drag out your own shape. Now to do another point, you need to hold down Alt and then you need to left click on the point you just made then click and drag alt click click and drag alt click Ex example you need to finish it up where the original point was so to go over that again but uh, sorry before we do anything now I just want to say you need to right click on that and make selection you need to have the feather radius as 10 because if you think of a light a spotlight it won't just end at one point example a shadow it fades into the background so a 10 radius will fade that white into the blue. So as you can see there, it's fading. Now obviously that doesn't look right. Obviously we need to have it a, a lighter blue. If you think of a spotlight, it's not going to make a room white if the, if the wallpaper is blue. It's just going to make the wallpaper <coughs> brighter. So to do that, we just want to change the opacity. Change that to something like 20, 25, whatever you want. Now, as I was saying before with the pen tool, you do need to end it up in the point that you began. So click, then click again and drag to make your shape. Then go back to the point and press Alt and click, and then click and drag and then finish up in your point. Really, it's hard to explain, but if you mess around with it yourselves, it's very easy to get used to. And that's pretty much it. We have our shape made. It's done onto it. If you want to make a clipping mask, you just right click on that layer and go to Create Clipping Mask and it'll clip it. Clipping means merge it. So we'll merge it with the bottom layer, the layer just below it. So what you want to do is you want to put the spotlight, one above the shape, and then you want to put the spotlight as a clipping mask. It's very easy. Again, mess around with it. I don't want to go into too much detail as the video gets very long and it's already long enough. Now, right now, I'm just messing around with the, with the text. You can manipulate text very easily using both the pen tool, the brush tool, and the eraser tool. So I'll show you the end product in a second, but basically it's too hard to go into, but mess around with text. It, the, main, the main objective of this is that you can manipulate text to do whatever you like, except sing and dance. So that's pretty much it, guys. Here's the end product. I hope you like it. Again, make your whatever custom logos you want. Go wild. Experiment. Photoshop is a learning curve. You do need to practice to learn what you exactly what you have to do. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Leave a comment below if you have any questions about anything I've mentioned in this video and more, and I will make sure to answer it as soon as I can. Uh, if you leave a comment right now, I will answer it straight away. Don't worry about that. Now, if you did like the video, if you like my tutorial style, make sure to leave a like as well as subscribe if you so wish. But that's it, guys. Thank you again so much for watching. And this is Zach RZ Tutorials, and I am signing out.